We're going to uh, uh, begin with a few remarks by myself, followed by Mayor David Narkowitz, who will present the uh, resolution of the state legislature declaring Jean Adams Day today, November 11th, 2017. I can hardly believe this has finally arrived. Some of us have been working on this for years, it feels like, and uh, we have a lot of people coming. There will be a lot of people coming and going during the day. Uh, some could only come in the afternoon, and some were uh, in the middle of a three-day weekend somewhere and wanted to be here but couldn't. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we're, we're going to be as relaxed and, and um, informal as possible. And there will be plenty of chance to talk with you with, and back and forth uh, between the audience and the uh, panelists. Um, so, I'll, I'll get started. The uh, Hampshire Gazette did a very nice article a few days ago, which, um, unfortunately, it said that Rutherford Platt would start with a speech, and I wasn't <laughs> expecting to start with a speech. Um, but I can start with a few minutes of introductory remarks as people are coming in. So, I am Rutherford Platt. I'm a proud resident of Florence, and I am Emeritus Professor of Geography and Planning Law at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. I don't usually have a written text when I stood in front of student audiences. I would wing it, of course. But I'm trying to be a little more orderly today. I want to thank you all, especially you who are here on time, uh, coming early enough to hopefully get a parking space across the street in the St. Mary's Church lot. Um, I, of course, have to say the usual uh, request to turn off your uh, electronic devices and I probably should be doing the same myself. And I'm, uh, you can see why we don't have PowerPoints today, by the way. There's <laughs> wonderful sunshine pouring in. Impossible to darken the, uh, the church. Uh, but it also relieves us of the technical hassles of trying to make the uh, PowerPoints work. So, uh, there are restrooms. Uh, first order of business, restrooms outside this doorway across the hall and also downstairs below those restrooms, um, another uh, pair of men's and women's rooms. Uh, we, I would suggest, we're not too crowded now, and, but plan ahead because the breaks are fairly short and the pews are quite tight. It's hard to get in and out once uh, they start to fill up. So uh, that's uh, fair warning. Senate President Stan Rosenberg was hoping to join us today, but as I said, he's been detained by other commitments. And, uh, but he has co-sponsored co uh, with Representative Aaron Vega from Holyoke. Uh, Aaron will be here this afternoon to moderate the first panel um, after lunch. And they have uh, both co-sponsored a joint legislative resolution, which we'll get to in a few minutes. David is presently reading it uh, to, and looking at all the original signatures. It's uh, quite an impressive document. Um, I wanted to start by saying that uh, it's a wonderful uh, testament to our democracy here in Northampton and Western Massachusetts that the, uh, the mayor, uh, David Narkowitz, is being filmed by his opponent, John Riley, uh, of Gabriel Books, and with with no recriminations whatsoever. Thank you, John. Thank you, David, for a very civil 
and a decent election. I wish it, it could be a model for the rest of the country. Next, I want to thank Mass Humanities for providing an open discussion grant to support this forum. Their endorsement helped gain the support from other donors, including some of you in the room, and enthusiastic allies who have helped in many ways to plan and coordinate this program. In particular, Pat Hines and Abby Jenks of the Trap Rock Center for Peace and Justice have been key participants in helping to uh, shape the program and offering Trap Rock to serve as our fiscal agent for donations. Thank you very much, Pat and Abby. We're also indebted to the entire staff of this church, Edwards Church, UCC. Uh, my wife, Barbara Kirchner, in the back, and I are members here. Uh, and this couldn't be more uh, convenient and comfortable and friendly to have an event like this in our own hometown church. Uh, we appreciate, I appreciate the help over the past year of Reverend Michael McSherry, who unfortunately, he's been a real partner in this enterprise, but he was detained today, he has to be in Boston, due to a canine medical emergency. Um, and that's serious, it really is. In Michael's absence, Reverend Deb Moore is here, and uh, she's our Minister of Faith Formation, and she represents the church uh, today. Uh, at 11 a.m., Deb is going to appear in front of you. She's sitting over here. Um, and ask for a minute of silence. And we will observe the 99th anniversary of the armistice from World War I. Jane, Jane, Jane uh, Adams would be so pleased, so pleased, and uh, it is very fitting considering her role in trying to mediate the ceasefire and to try to keep the United States from entering the war and thereafter to develop international institutions to try to prevent war, the war against war, they called it at the time. On the reverse side of your green program sheets, there are a list of many other people and organizations who have been part of this process, and I want to thank them all for their various contributions. Uh, there are some other handouts on the table back there uh, relating to the program today and to Hull House and Jane Adams. Uh, the first is, of course, the program on a green page. Then there is a list of the first panel of bios, uh, the keynote panel. And on the back of that is a list of Hull House firsts, uh, which uh, was uh, found in a, uh, the Jane Addams Reader that was edited by Jean Beth B. Elstein, who was formerly a faculty member at UMass. Uh, there's also uh, a set of miscellaneous quotes about Jane Addams, or in one case by her, uh, called Remembering Jane Addams and Hull House, that I put together, just because I've been doing a lot of reading, and it's just so interesting. She was such a fascinating person, and so important. Uh, we ask you to complete the participant form, which is the other handout on the table back there. When you get around to it, uh, that's a mass humanities request, and you can leave those at the back of the room when you leave, or any time that's convenient. Uh, please notice these two portraits on either side of me. Uh, these are Jane at different stages of her life. On your right, is a famous, I'm sorry, on your left, my right, is the young Jane drawn by our friend and local Northampton-based artist, Kathy Brown, who is somewhere in the room. Can you raise your hand? <laughs> and 
that that uh, picture is part of the cover of Kathy's book, The House That Jane Built. It is a marvel. And she is, some of her work is going to be on display at Michelson's Gallery beginning tomorrow, is that right? Uh, and she has some, some cards relating to that in the back of the room. Now the other portrait, uh, which we've used uh, for many purposes on our Facebook site and so forth, and flyer is a portrait from 1906 when uh, at, by which time uh, Jane was uh, uh, she was 46 years old and already world famous she was born in 1860 and I should mention even though I'm sure that Lucy Knight is going to say this that she she was born in rural Illinois. Her father was a local businessman, entrepreneur, and a state legislature, legislator with Abraham Lincoln and a close friend of Abraham Lincoln who called him Double D. And this was part of the heritage that shaped the early life of Jane Addams. Uh, this is, by the way, a portrait painted by George DeForest Bush, and it hangs in the National Portrait Gallery, the original one. My own fascination with Jane Addams and her world dates back only about four years, when by chance I picked up a book at the Broadside Bookstore, a few steps down the street, called Jane Addams, Spirit in Action, by Louise W. Knight, who is our keynote speaker today. That, in, that book led me quickly to Louise's earlier book, Citizen, the, uh, Jane Addams and the Struggle for Democracy. Incidentally, that first book that I mentioned, Jane Addams, Spirit in Action, this is my copy, filled with post-its and underlinings and so forth. It's a real wonderful introduction, recently written and published in, in uh, 2010. I recommend it very strongly. Uh, after reading The Citizen um, uh, and The Struggle for Democracy, that led me to Alan Davis's American Heroine biography of 1971 and to Jane's own two memoirs, the, for the 20 Years of Hull House and her second memoir, The Second 20 Years of Hull House. And despite their rather uh, uh, straight-laced titles, they are fascinating, absolutely wonderful books. So that's how I got into this subject unexpectedly. It was a mind-boggling uh, experience, for I never realized, as I'm sure, sure is widely true, that besides founding Hull House with Ellen Gates' star, that Jane Addams co-founded the NAACP, the ACLU, and the Women's International League for Free Peace and Freedom, which you'll hear more about later from Pat Hines. Each of those organizations continues today, even though Hull House was de demolished substantially for urban renewal in the 1960s, and the campus of the University of Illinois, Chicago, now sits on what used to be Hull House and its neighborhoods. One more minute, uh, and I'll turn it over to David. According to, to Eleanor Roosevelt's biographer, Blanche Wiesencook, Jane was a key role model for Eleanor, uh, particularly in the areas of civil rights and international peace. Alan Davis wrote that Eleanor, quote, Rose, Eleanor Roosevelt soon replaced Jane Addams, who died in 1935, as the most loved and hated woman in America. But today she's unfortunately not well known, uh, loved, or hated. We want to bring her back. And one of the long-term goals uh, of, of uh, this project is to um, perhaps influence a Florentine Films documentary on the remarkable history of Jane Addams and Hull House. So we want to call her out of retirement 
How much Jane and her Hull House entourage are needed today to provide their wisdom, tenacity, and clear sense of democracy and civic virtue in this time of crisis for our society, our nation, and our planet. And thank you very much. Uh, I want to turn over the podium to our mayor, David Narkowitz, newly reelected, and he will continue with the welcoming. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's great to be with you this morning. And um, let's give another round of applause for Rudd. For all of This panel a reality, and obviously we want to thank uh, Mass Cultural for the support. Um, uh, S State Senate President Rosenberg uh, reached out to me yesterday. He was unable to be here, um, so I want to obviously bring greetings on behalf of the city, uh, but also read a special resolution um, that both uh, Senate President Rosenberg as well as uh, State Representative Aaron Vega uh, co-sponsored. Um, the state writes in really small print, so I'm going to have to use my reading glasses. So, the Massachusetts General Court, a resolution, uh, November 11, 2017. Whereas on November 11, 2017, a forum will be held in the city of Northampton honoring the 99th anniversary of Armistice Day, and it will recognize Jane Addams Day in honor of her life and legacy. And whereas Jane Addams was born on September 6, 1860, in Cedarville, Illinois, and was the co-founder and longtime director of Hull House in Chicago, Illinois. And whereas Jane Addams stimulated the spread of the urban settlement movement to bring rich and poor Americans together across the United States, including at Andover House in the city of Boston, which continues to operate today as United South End Settlements. And whereas Jane Addams served as role model and mentor to generations of social reformers, including Florence Kelly, Julia Lathrop, Dr. Alice Hamilton, Francis Perkins, Harold Ickes, and Eleanor Roosevelt. Whereas Jane Addams' moral compass and belief in democracy continue to offer guidance and reassurance to those who struggle for peace, justice, and a caring society today. And whereas a friend and ally of W.E.B. Du Bois, Jane Addams helped establish the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and promoting the cause of civil rights and social justice for vulnerable individuals and populations. And whereas, in 1931, Jane Addams became the first American woman to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in recognition of her leadership in the international women's peace movement, including her brave attempt to mediate a truce during World War I. So therefore, be it resolved, that the Massachusetts General Court hereby commends the city of Northampton on its recognition of November 11, 2017 as Jane Addams Day, and be it further resolved that a copy of these resolutions be forwarded by the clerk of the Massachusetts House of Representatives to the city of Northampton. And it's signed both by the Speaker of the House, Robert A. DeLeo, as well as Senate President Stan Rosenberg. Another mayor who is here, Mayor Claire Higgins, is with us today, so I want to make sure we recognize her. Thank you again, and have a great day.